Hello and a huge welcome to you to this free introductory training on how to make videos that work for you and generate more leads for your business in a smarter way. Within this training, I'm going to speak about the three main stages of video production, which is planning, filming and editing. Planning a video can be difficult if you don't know the process, but the process is quite simple once you get your head around it. Filming can all be done with your phone. Cinema movies are shot on mobile phones these days and the footage is just getting better and better so there's really no excuse and then editing in my mind is going to be as required as PowerPoint is today the ability to be able to make videos you know just kind of trim the top add a logo add some music you know it's actually quite simple to do now with the software that I will give you a look at throughout the presentation and then of course the final step is pressing play and that's when your video actually goes off and does the work for you. So that brings me to why bother learning to make videos? Well, there's a few reasons. And the first one is to save yourself time. I know that probably doesn't make sense. You're probably thinking, well, it's going to take me time to learn how to make videos and then it's going to take me time to make videos. So how is it going to save me time? Well, what I found is that my most popular videos are the videos that I, I really put some effort into are still paying back to me years later. So, for example, I uploaded a video to LinkedIn about two years ago, giving adding value to the people who were watching and just discussing why larger companies should have internal video teams. And only a few months ago, I got a call from a CEO of a company saying, could you meet up with us? And um, we just have an idea to create a video team in house. And I was like, where did you hear about me? And they were like, well, we actually found your video on LinkedIn and thought it was great. So, you know. That's like almost having a sales team on the ground without me actually having to be there and me having to do anything, which is such a bonus. So your video lives out in the world doing work on your behalf. Another reason to make videos is to build trust with you or to get people to be more familiar with you. So people like what they are familiar with. It's a, a common kind of principle, the familiarity principle. And once we're familiar with something, we're more likely to purchase that thing. It's why companies spend so much money on Super Bowl ads, because if they put it in front of the millions of people who watch the Super Bowl, the next time that person is in the supermarket, for example, and they're walking down an aisle full of similar products, the, what they're familiar with is probably going to be something that they'd actually choose quicker than its competitors around it. So by having yourself on video and like online for people to get to know you better, you're, you're building that trust without actually having to meet the people in person. It's amazing how this works. So these two on the top are about, you know, why it's important to create videos in general. But why bother making them yourself? And there's a couple of reasons here. The first is to gain a competitive edge. 86% of businesses are now making videos and it's only growing. Now, I don't know what percentage you're making them internally and what percentage are going out to companies to make them, but they're making them and they're learning things. And the sooner you start making videos and learning from your mistakes, the sooner you're going to gain that competitive edge, especially when you're making them yourself, especially when you're planning them yourself filming yourself speaking to camera which is a skill in itself editing them which is you know a new software to learn and then promoting them online and measuring the metrics it's a whole thing but it's so worth it and it is the most rewarding trade I've ever learned and you know I was late getting into video but I wish that you know it was it was made an option for me a lot sooner like it is for the younger people today and they're all learning themselves as well through TikTok and Reels but it definitely pays off and then the final thing is when you make your own videos you own it so when I was first making videos, I would go to a company and sit down with them and we'd brainstorm for an hour about their video idea. So there'd be a lot of different ideas and, you know, I'd be trying to get my head around the company and what were their values? What was their vision? What was their mission? What, what did they even do? And I learned a lot in that time. You know, I went from, you know, on Monday being in a building supplies company to Friday being in a microbiology lab. And that was great, but it was also very difficult for me to try and, you know, put the messaging together for all of these different types of companies. And sometimes you'd get it wrong, you know, and I found I've met a lot of companies who were like, you know, we got this person in to make our video and it just didn't hit the mark. It didn't, it didn't represent us. And I started to think to myself, I was like, why, why, why are companies not planning themselves? Like it's, it's, you know, 
once you have a structure in place, it's relatively easy to follow that structure. Not saying planning videos is easy, but you know, you can do it 100%. So why hand that over to someone else who doesn't really get it or you've just pay them to spend an awful lot of time getting their head around it. So now while I will sometimes film and edit for companies, I always try to make sure that they own the video plan. And also when you make a video yourself, say it's two and a half minutes long, and something changes within the messaging, you can go in and update that video. Or if you wanted to take a 20 second piece from that video and upload it to Reels, you could do that yourself without having to, you know, pick up the phone and be like, hi, um, any chance you could just do this for me again? And you know, those conversations can get awkward as well. So being able to do it in-house is so incredibly rewarding I have to say so by making videos yourself you can actually save yourself time you can build trust and make people more familiar with you you can gain an edge over your competition and you can own the video and then once your videos are out there that's when they start working for you and helping you generate more leads while you can just you know sit in a beach or whatever um So there's a big difference though at the moment and this took me a long time to get my head around when Reels and Instagram Reels and TikTok and YouTube Shorts came in. I was like, wow, this is, this is different. This is vertical video, short form that doesn't have a long shelf life. So when I upload something to Reels, I probably have a day or two of getting hits and then it just completely takes a huge fall after that. So these are the options. You can either jump on trends, which are the dancing videos, I think is the best example where, you know, a lot of companies were like, do I have to dance? And it's like, no, you don't have to dance. I have thankfully never had to make a dancing video, but I have jumped on trends and I'll give you an example of that in a second. But the trends are these shiny, beautiful daffodils that come out for a small portion of the year, light up our lives for a brief moment and then they go away again. That's how I see trends. Creating evergreen content is a different story. That's where you're planting a seed and nourishing it the whole time and that's adding real value to your clients. So in my example here, jumping on trends was a video I created for Instagram Reels. It was someone else's audio and I edited it to this sign that I bought for my home office, which flipped from do not disturb to um, come or to knock whenever you want to come in. And the audio was like, today is not the day. Um, I don't want to be disturbed. I'm not the one. I can't even remember what the audio was. And I wrote work from home solutions. To be honest, I didn't even think that this video made any sense. I was like, anyway, I'll just upload it. It's completely random. And then my phone started going mental. I got 2.2 million views. Million. I mean, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Oh my God, I'm going to dedicate my whole life to Reels and TikTok. I got 26,000 likes on it. I got a good few comments about um, home security and things like that, which also didn't make much sense. Uh, the whole thing didn't make a lot of sense, basically. But what it what it resulted in was about three or four extra followers on my Instagram page. And Did it say anything about my business? No, it was a trend audio and it didn't show me. It didn't show video tips. It didn't show anything that was relevant to what I do. So really that 2.2 million views had no benefit other than me being able to tell the story. (laughs) Whereas adding real value is a different thing altogether. So this video I made in the beginning of 2020 when everything was um, going a bit wild and uh, it was I just wanted to I was getting a lot of questions people were asking me you know I need to make a video or I need to update these people or my customers haven't heard from me I really want to just tell them what's going on so I just made a video I made a script I followed my planning process made a script filmed it on my own in one go and um, then edited it using the software that I will show you and that video has had 11,000 views over two years so that might not seem like a lot but that's been 11,000 engaged aged people who are now learning about me and learning about what I do and that has resulted in an awful lot of YouTube subscriptions an awful lot of people getting in touch with me over email and um, our president of the local chamber said that she watches it before she makes every video and she sends it on to all of her contacts so that's one that is the tree versus the daffodils and I would 100% be investing more time into the tree and hoping that you would also do the same. Just to show you, this is what a thousand people look like. 
This is a thousand people in a room. Imagine even speaking on stage in front of that many people and then multiply that by 11. That's how many people have viewed my video online. So, you know, while I did put a bit of time and effort into it, a small amount, I'm still reaping the rewards of that video ever since. And those are the type of videos that I want you to be creating too and you to be putting your focus on so that you can get similar results. So just to give you a little bit of background about me, this is where my video career began. What's your name? Mom. Judy Russell. Judy what? Judy Russell. Judy what Russell? Judy Russell Breeder. So I thought that I was going to be a famous video presenter from the age of uh, two or three and I loved the video camera and I still cannot believe what these do. I know this is a phone, but I can't believe that you can record a moment in time and then watch back that moment in the past in the present. Like it's just mind blowing and it looks like you're there. Like it's so real, especially since color and audio is just getting better and better. We can capture moments from the past and play them in the present. It's, it still blows my mind. But as time went on, I lost confidence in that becoming an actual career and was lucky enough to go to college and get a master's in business economics. Great to learn. Didn't want to actually work in it at the time. I was like 21. I was like, right, I'm out of here. I am going to travel the world and save the world also at the time. And uh, saving the world is um, a lot more difficult than it appears to be. But I eventually found a real job, my first kind of real job as a presenter for a YouTube channel. So I was scripting. I was I was speaking to camera. I was doing all the producing, but I didn't have the technical know how. And that bothered me because I was like, I need to rely on someone now every time I need something small done so I can come up with these ideas for videos, but I always need help. And I was like, I want to learn about this stuff. I want to learn about lighting. I want to learn about camera. I want to learn about editing. So I did. I enrolled in a 12 month course, a very intensive course that that I just was like a sponge for all of the knowledge. I just loved learning this stuff. And everything that I learned in that course has really become the basis of my training programs. So then I went on to edit a TV show called The Fear and I edited a lot of stuff after that, but I realized that I wanted to do more. So I got my own show, which was one of the most exciting opportunities of my life. However, it was made for a tiny budget. I'm talking less than a thousand euro to make a 30 minute show every week. And it completely broke me. And, you know, the shows that I was coming from had a budget of, you know, 50,000 euro per episode. Then I was going to a budget of 850 euro per episode and for the same duration. But I just had to do everything myself. And, you know, my camera was five grand. My tripod was a grand. One time my camera broke. I had to send it to London to get fixed. It was one time I dropped a hard drive and lost all the footage from the week. Like it was it was a really, really stressful time, really stressful. And, you know, I learned the hard way, the very hard way how to make content for a small amount of effort and finance and money. In between all that as well, I worked on the Young Offenders movie before it was made a series and um, before it was, you know, there was a budget for it, basically. But uh, it was amazing to work on an actual film and a film that had such success afterwards. But it was on that film that I started filming with my phone. I was filming behind the scenes footage to make a small documentary for the DVD. And I was thinking at the time I was like, it was an iPhone 6. And I was like, I'll never, I'll never be able to use this. It's just nice to have some of this stuff. And then it was like when I kind of put it all together with my proper cameras footage next to the iPhone footage, I was looking at the two and I was like, it's not that bad. Like it wasn't perfect by any means, but under the right lighting conditions and I always had good audio anyway, it didn't actually make a huge difference to how I was viewing the stuff. So then, well, let's go back. I burnt out, I had a huge burnout. And then I was like, okay, go back to the drawing board. What are you going to do next? Why don't you put everything you've learned, every single bit that you've learned together into something that you can share with businesses? Because I still loved businesses from my masters. I knew that businesses were going to need to use video more. So I was like, let's just turn this into a program. So I spent maybe a month locked in a room creating all of these slides and 
going back and revisiting stories, trying to grab studies from different places, trying to create processes and roadmaps to make the video production process really, really simple for businesses who knew they had to do it but didn't even know where to start. And I've been doing this now for five years, training everyone from entrepreneurs, digital marketers, academics, researchers, CEOs. Literally, I've worked with the most fascinating people over the past few years teaching them everything from planning, storyboarding, editing, presenting, what to wear, how to, you know, what to do with their hands, everything. Um, And it has been extremely exciting. Um, So whether you are one of these people or whether you're, you know, trying to grow a video team internally within your organization or if you're just dabbling and you just want to know if this is something that you actually want to get more involved in in the future then stick with me because we are now going to talk about phase one or stage one of the video production process which is planning and you know a goal without a plan is just a wish and it's so true when I first started off in that college course we were so like excited by the equipment we got this locker full of broadcast gear you know a big camera proper you know camera person camera which sits on your shoulder and these big lights and all of this stuff and we were given full access to it and we just went out and started filming and we were like oh we'll think about how to put put it together later let's just focus on getting loads of footage so I'd say we got hours of footage and then when we got to kind of edit it together we were like makes no sense this is going nowhere. I don't know what to do here. And, you know, that kind of happened four or five times before we were like, OK, I see now the planning is important. So and then also what I found is that there's no there's no step by step. I couldn't find any step by step way to plan. Now, obviously, there's a million YouTube videos out there and you can go through YouTube and learn how to plan videos for sure. But what I wanted to do was curate it into a really simple workbook that you could fill out over having a cup of coffee and then let it mull, digest it and then come back and revisit it. But today, I suppose what I want to show you is let's go go back a step before that. Like you need the video topic idea before you start planning it out. A lot of times as well, I think that people, you know, they're, they, they make videos that they think their audience wants to watch when there's enough data out there that you can actually find out what your audience is looking for and make videos based on that. So where I go for this is a, an amazing website called answerthepublic.com. Go to it now and go through this with me. Then you'll see this little box that allows you to enter a topic, brand or product and it says use one to two words for best results. So I've typed in video production here and I've done this for all of my different keywords over time and some of them work well others don't you can pick the location I have the United States here and then I'm going for English and then click search then this should take a few minutes as it scrolls the internet looking through Google and Bing and trying to find out what people are actually typing into search engines to find out more about so then it gives you this lovely graph which is very hard to read from far away but I just love how it kind of structures itself and then if you scroll down a bit more, it's it shows you what those actual inputs are. So what is video production or what's video production? So people are actually putting in an apostrophe and an S, which is interesting. But that means that if I'm making a video about video production, I should make the title what's video production instead of what is video production. So the video production process and um, video production stages, the three stages of video production. When I first looked at this, I was like, People are asking about the three stages of video production. I was like, you know, or what is video production? That's something that I'd be like, I'm sure everyone knows what video production is. But that's because I'm suffering from the curse of knowledge because I'm invested in this. I'm in this every single day. So then I'm, I'm not stepping back and going, people are actually asking, what's video production? That's a great one. I could totally make a video about what's video production and show people that it's about planning, filming and editing and then creating a final piece out of that. So you can actually download an entire Excel sheet and choose the titles for videos that would actually suit you. And then within a half an hour or an hour, you've got 20 to 100 different topics that you can make videos about in the future. And here now you have a content plan of some type. And now you just need to go and plan the first one. So say you've chosen your topic now, then what you need to do is plan it out. So this here are my eight steps for planning an excellent video. 
In the online course, each of these steps has a dedicated lesson that is attached to it, where I go through each of the steps in actual detail. So step one is the five W's roadmap. Step two is duration and aspect ratio, depending on where your audience is. Step three is the production type. You're going to add a hook, you're going to start a storyboard, then you add everything from your storyboard into your script and shot list, and then you plan your production plan and milestones. And then you also check if your video is legally compliant. So those are the eight steps for planning an excellent video. And here's what Ross had to say after doing the online course. So this is actually what the online course looks like. I had three people on it. And when you do it, you kind of get to know and love these three people because their businesses are just fabulous and, and they're just really, really great um, human beings. I really enjoyed the course at the Vid Academy. Um, I suppose, you know, not only did it teach me, you know, how I can create videos with my phone and how to edit them in the software. Um, I, I'd be a bit of a YouTube junkie, so I'd often be looking up like clips on how to do, how to like, edit and make, you know, distinct elements. But I suppose I'd never really considered like how to make the full package, you know, and like how to sell a message. So like what was really nice about the Vid Academy was it gave me great clarity on my voice and with the voice of the brand and what our message was and what was the best way of clearly communicating that in you know 60 seconds or a minute and a half which is something i had no idea how to do before um, and then just all the helpful tips and tricks on like how to quickly make content and like just using adobe rush and all the other advice you gave on like how to film and talk to camera and prepare for that and um, no fantastic i really enjoyed it it was really interesting in this instance with Ross because Noreen and Neve were kind of from more established businesses. They had their messaging already complete. They just needed to get their messaging into a script and shot list. Whereas Ross's business was a startup. So it was still going through that phase of learning what the messaging was as it was growing and learning more about itself. But what Ross told me was that he was able to, you know, use the eight steps to actually define the messaging. So it was helping them to come up with their their company's uh, key messages as well as coming up with the video idea. So I was so delighted to hear that it was working that way too. So the second phase then is filming your video and filming is probably the most enjoyable part but it's also the most frustrating part of all and what we should be doing is batch filming. So we should be going away and planning maybe five to ten different videos and then getting our makeup done, getting the lights ready or natural lighting or whatever we might do and trying to record them all in one go because it does take a lot of time to set up and pack down. But in terms of filming, I'm going to play this video that I was telling you about the 11,000 views video that I made at the start of lockdown. Now, it's not completely evergreen because there's a couple of things in it that are that don't really make sense anymore. For example, I don't talk about TikTok or anything like that. And I talk about only recording in landscape. I've changed that a little bit, but most of it is still relevant today and the tips should still make sense to you. There has never been a better time to start filming yourself speaking to camera so that you can continue communicating with your audience and keeping them updated. Viewers are not expecting perfection at the moment. They'll just be happy to hear from you. So here are 10 steps that will help you film with your phone in a more professional way. Step one, create a script. In video, you'll only fit around 130 words into a minute. So it's important to be deliberate about what you're trying to say. So sit down and write out a few bullet points or if you prefer, write out a full script and learn it off. Whatever is easier for you. Step two, record excellent sound. Studies have proven that sound quality is actually more important to the viewer than video quality. So find a quiet room, turn off anything that makes noise like computers, fridges, any other machines and close the windows and doors. If you have some budget, then I would suggest investing in a lavalier mic. The Rode Smart Lav costs around 50 euro through Amazon, but if you don't have access to something like that, just make sure the room you're filming in is quiet. Step three, turn your phone. When you're filming with your phone, make sure to turn it to its side so that it's in landscape mode. I shoot most of my videos in landscape mode because I find that it's more professional and I can use it across more platforms. Now, if you're planning to just make stories for Facebook or Instagram, then portrait mode will work fine too. Step four, light yourself up. Natural light is your best friend. So try to get the light shining onto your face from a window. If you can't shoot near a window or you have to shoot in the evening, then try to use household lamps to light yourself up as the viewer is drawn to the brightest part of the frame. Step five, stabilize your phone. 
Put your phone on a shelf or even better, a windowsill. And if you don't have a tripod at home, then it's really easy to make a DIY tripod using a reusable cup. Just use a scissors and snip out two slits on opposite sides of the cup so that you can slot your phone in. Step six, get the position right. Try and make sure that the camera is at eye level because if you're looking up, you can seem subservient and if you're looking down, you can seem domineering. Also try to make sure that your camera is at least arm's length away so you're not too in your viewer's face. And finally, try to correct your headroom. So this is where there's just a little bit of space between the top of your head and the top of the frame. Not too much, not too little. Step seven, clean your lens. It's amazing the difference that a clean lens can make. So try and find a lens cloth, give it a rub, and you'll notice the difference. Step eight, look the part. Try and wear clothes that you'd wear if you were meeting your audience in person. And try to avoid stripes and patterns as this can be quite distracting. Wear powder because it will take the shine off your face and you will be much happier that you did. Step nine, look into the lens. When we're filming in selfie mode, it can be easy to get distracted by our own video. You can see the difference here of when I'm looking at my video and now when I'm looking into the lens. So try to pretend that there's actually someone behind the lens that you already know and have a relationship with that you're talking to and this will translate to the viewer and help them to feel more connected to you. Step 10, keep practicing. The only way to get better at filming and presenting is by practicing. So set yourself a goal to film yourself every day. And you don't have to share and upload it. You can instead show it to your friends and family and get feedback from them as they'll notice things that you can't see or hear. That was 10 tips. And, and those tips, you know, if you can start making videos with those 10 tips, go and start now 100%. But if you want to dig a bit deeper, into video production, then the online course provides 20 different lectures on the entire filming process. Everything from why is sound so important, how to capture excellent sound, recommended microphones, then when you're filming, what is resolution and frame rates, how to lock focus and brightness, getting the most out of natural light, i.e. the sun, how to use artificial lighting, why ring lights are not just for influencers, they're as much for business people and anyone who wants to make a video at home for sure. How to be deliberate with backgrounds, how to look great on Zoom, how to use your iPhone as a webcam. And these are all about kind of, you know, upping your game when you're taking meetings or working from home or delivering workshops and webinars. So these can be helpful for that too. Keeping your shot steady, how to position presenters, why presenting makes us feel uncomfortable, actionable tips for presenting to camera, tips for interviewing others, how to capture cutaways or extra additional footage and how to find free stock footage, then copyright free music. And then there's a comment section and a Q&A. The feedback has been wonderful from the filming section of the course. And one lady, Kathy, wrote to me after and told me that she has the confidence to go forth and create video shorts. She said her managing director was blown away by the final edit, even though I thought my voiceover was not that great. Kathy's voice was so wonderful. Kathy had the most beautiful voiceover voice, but Kathy didn't think that she had the voice over voice. And that was because, as I explained to her, there's a tiny muscle behind your ear that vibrates when you speak. And it actually makes you sound deeper in your head than you do out loud. So we don't actually hear ourselves as we sound. We hear ourselves differently than how we actually sound. It's a confidence thing for sure when you're filming. You want to make sure that you're doing it right and just have a little bit more energy um, to, to move yourself forward. Another course participant, Linda, said, if you're looking to have your business stand out for the crowd, I would strongly suggest the Vid Academy course and that even technophobes can do this. I've had so many people join the course that's, that started with, I'm a technophobe. Actually, Noreen from the online course was one of these people. And then Noreen like pulls out an iPhone 13 Pro Max or a 12 Pro Max. She tells me that she has a microphone just that she's had for a while that she was editing using a different software and making other videos. And then I see that she's a YouTube channel with hundreds of subscribers. And I was like, Noreen, you are 100% not a te technophobe. I feel like I could actually learn a thing or two from you. So I don't think that any of you are technophobes. And, you know, if you can use one of these, then you're fine. You just probably don't need to know the mechanics of what's underneath the bonnet. You just need to be shown how to use it once. And, you know, just to be given a bit of room and space to, to give things a try. 
and then having that confidence to upload that that's a really really important one Jenny also found that there were so many hints and tips that can be implemented straight away whatever the budget or the goal and I think that's really true so if your budget is large you can use up that budget 100% and but you can put it into things that will actually make your videos better like props or locations or actors as opposed to putting it into expensive cameras and expensive gear when things don't really need to be expensive anymore and your audience aren't going to see that and then the third and final phase of the video production three stages is the edit and that's where you're you're getting everything putting it together and trying to make it make sense in one story trying to make it cohesive and Walter Murch is one of the most renowned editors in the world he edited The Godfather he's been editing on film since the 60s and then he moved into digital editing and he even said editing is now something almost everyone can do at a simple level and enjoy it so true but to take it to a higher level requires the same dedication and persistence that any art form does. So what I tried to do in the course is give you the basics for editing, but show you some of those really simple tricks that can really help you make your footage look more professional, look and sound more professional. And back to sound, which is something I spend a lot of time on in the filming course for this reason. But I just want to show you this video here. It's about sound, but then I want to show you the behind the scenes of the edit with this video. High quality audio makes you sound smarter. A study by the University of Southern California asked people to listen to a good quality talk and a bad quality talk and rate how much they liked the speaker and if they thought that the speaker's research was important. When the audio quality was high, people perceived that the research was more important. When the audio quality was low, they actually liked the speaker less. Going to show how important audio quality is. So if there's actually one thing you take from today, it's that audio is so important but anyway this is what the editing software rush looks like now it might look a little bit scary when you first see it but it's actually so simple once you start using it i've been through all of the editing softwares and i used to teach editing on mobile because we were you know we were everywhere when i first started doing this we were out and about and we were getting trains and buses and i was like the ability to edit and film and edit and upload on one device was brilliant. But then when we went into lockdown, I was like, the feedback I'm getting is that the phone is too small. People are enjoying doing it, but they don't want to do it all the time. So I went out shopping for an editor that was on mobile and on desktop and that you could kind of, you know, interchangeably go between the two and that once you learned on the desktop, it made loads of sense on phone and that is Adobe Rush. And you know, there's other competitors out there, but I will argue to the end for Rush. Adobe is a renowned company. Most large companies have an Adobe subscription. So that means that a lot of people that I teach, they don't actually have to pay anything. They just need to get their IT person to um, allow it to be installed in their computer. It's about 10 euro a month, but there is a free trial. So go ahead, download the free trial and see what you think of it. But what I do in the course is I go through everything from cutting and trimming to adding music to adding voiceovers straight in to putting on graphics and text graphics to adding in additional footage to cover what I'm saying to bring in your logo and then to end with the music going out. Another testimonial said the Vid Academy course was very well run showing us from start to finish everything that was involved in video production for SMEs breaking it down to the individual aspects of planning, filming and editing to ensure that thought is given to all stages and the process resulting in a finished video that serves a specific purpose and meets your business need and this group were really great at editing one of their people just really loved the editing part and that's what I find sometimes Editing isn't for everyone, but if you're working with the team, you can hand off the editing part to that person. And it's very easy to work within a team in video production. If you're a solopreneur, an entrepreneur, or someone who just has a business on your own, what you might decide is that you love editing and you'll do it all the time, or that you like planning and you like filming, but you actually want to send the footage away to a remote editor, but then you're sending them the plan, you're sending them the footage, and it's so easy for them then to just chop and change with your plan and your footage that they should be able to batch edit a number of videos for you in one day if you make the process simple for them. But that's why you have to understand the process from start to finish before you can do that. And even if you never edit, understanding what goes into editing is good for empathy because, you know, 
I think a lot of people, they underestimate how much editors do, especially professional editors who really spend time on the stuff now that we probably will never have to. But like they, they, they are a dime a dozen. And I think a lot of people are like, oh, just update that or take that out. And when you see behind the scenes, then the next time you work with an editor, you'll be able to talk their language and you'll be able to empathise with them more if you're giving them something that's difficult. Or you'll be able to say, sure, that's only a two second job. Just swap that out there. And then they'll be like, all right, true. And they won't be able to um, pull the wool over your eyes. Not that they would. Uh, They're a very um, honest bunch. But then the final thing is to play. So you've planned, filmed and edited it. And now you can allow other people to play your video while you go off and play in life, hopefully. So you can find out more about the video production bootcamp at bit.ly bit.ly forward slash the video bootcamp and you will be led to the page where you can see all of the lessons that are available. So you can see the planning stage, the filming stage and the editing stage, each lesson that's included and then see if this is something that you're interested in. If you'd like to reach out to me directly, I'm at judy at thevidacademy.com. That's J-U-D-I-E at thevidacademy.com and you can set up a call with me if you've got more specific needs or if you want to do private group training live online or whatever you want to do. But thank you so much for listening today. I really enjoyed sharing my passion for video production with you. I really would never go back and change what I've learned in this. It's, it's just, it stands to everything. It stands to everything within business and outside of business. Every time I go to a friend's party, I'll always make them a quick montage video using a very simple app. And they're always like, wow, delighted with me. So, you know, even if you don't use it for your business, maybe you can use it for things like that in the future. Thanks a million and see you again.